Hello students, and welcome back to just another lovely day of physical science. In this lesson, I'm going to be telling you about the metric system and why the imperial system that we use in America is terrible. And first, let's start off with just this hilarious comic. Oops, I thought those were gallons, not liters, and the plane is crashing to the ground and they're probably going to die. So in this case, the reason that this is funny is if you picture a gallon, like a gallon of milk, is much, much bigger than a liter. In fact, one gallon is equal to about 3.7 liters. So therefore, let's pretend that they put in 10 gallons, but really they only put in 10 liters, they just didn't put as much fuel in. And that's why this comic is hilarious. The learning outcome for today is that I will be able to compare and contrast the English or the imperial system, whatever you want to call it, to the metric system. And time for me to go on one of my rants. So here, the metric system makes sense. The imperial system does not. The metric system is used in most countries around the world. And by the way, there are roughly 181 countries in the world. Three use the imperial system. United States, Burma, and Liberia. And then Canada does like a weird hybrid thing. But for the most part, the metric system is used by about the other 178 countries. The metric system, everything is based on 10. One centimeter equals 10 millimeters. One meter equals 100 millimeters, and so on. The imperial system, we have one foot equals 12 inches. We have one mile equals 5,280 feet. We have one mile equals 1,760 yards. It just, there's no consistency there. Distance, everything they use is meters, centimeters, millimeters, kilometers. It's all consistent. We have feet, inches, miles, yards, volume. We have cups, quarts, gallons. And if I were to ask you guys how many cups are in a quart, I have no idea tablespoons in a cup. I have no idea. It's it's very, very, very inconsistent. Whereas if you look at the metric system, they always have 1,000 millimeters would be equal to one meter. Or you could just start talking about volume. You would have 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. It's consistent. Guess what? 1,000 milligrams is equal to one gram. So it's just, it's consistent no matter what you're talking about. But in the English system, we don't have any of that. Another one that we could talk about is temperature. Temperature in the metric system, water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. I want you to think to yourself right now, do you know what temperature water freezes at? Do you know what temperature water boils at? Most students would be like, oh, in the imperial system, water freezes at 32 degrees Celsius. Cool. Most students do not know what temperature it boils at. And I'm sorry, right here I should have written Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Well, just as a heads up, it boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, it doesn't really make sense. So that's why the metric system is far, far, far superior superior compared to the imperial system. Then we could get into the discussion of why does the U.S. still use the metric system? Well, I want you to take a second, think about that, discuss it with a partner. So please pause your video and have that discussion as to why the U.S. still uses the imperial system. Okay, so realistically, one of the reasons that the U.S. still uses the imperial system probably two main reasons. One, it would be very expensive for us to switch over to the metric system at this point. You know, picture like cars are usually miles per hour. I guess they'll have kilometers per hour in there. You look at speed limit signs, those are all miles per hour. So we'd have to switch all of those over. And then it would just be a lot of work and transitioning for people to get used to saying temperature in Celsius instead of Fahrenheit, saying distance in kilometers instead of miles. So those are the reasons that we don't switch over. Again, just as a comparison, here are um, green represents countries that primarily use the metric system. Gray 
are countries that use the imperial system. So it would make a lot of sense for the United States to switch over so that way the entire world, or most of the world, could be on the same system. If I still haven't convinced you yet that the metric system is way better, I'm going to give it one last shot. So here is space in the metric system, and this is what space would look like in the imperial system. Okay, for those of you that don't get it, it's a Star Wars joke. There's the Imperials and there's the Rebels, and that's why it's funny. So just like in last unit when you had the periodic table was your new best friend, this is your new best friend for this unit. And actually, this can be found on the back of that periodic table. Some of you may have noticed that, some of you may not have. Um, but what we have here is we have different conversions up top. So we have English and metric conversions and metric and metric conversions. And then we also have these prefixes down below, which are huge part of understanding and being able to do science. Because in science, we use the metric system. And really, metric is nice because you can just add these prefixes to change your measurement. Whereas if we look at like these English and metric conversions, you know, English for measuring volume, we have quarts, we have gallons, um, and you could even get into cups and things like that. Uh, in English, to measure length, we have inches, we have feet, yards, miles. It's just, there's no consistency between a mass we use, um, pounds or tons. Again, there's just, there's not consistency with all of this. Whereas if you look over here at the metric system, guess what? Volume is always measured in liters. Or you might add some of these prefixes like milliliters, deciliters, centiliters, and so on. Length is always measured meters or, you know, millimeters, centimeters. You're just adding on this prefix. Mass is always measured in grams. So that's one really nice thing with the metric system is it's consistent. Volume is always something liters. Length is always something meters. Mass is always something grams. So very, very straightforward. So if you are doing any converting and you notice that you're going from like liters to quarts, well, that's a metric system to an English system. So you're going to use this table. Or if you're converting like inches into meters of some sort or inches to centimeters. Again, that's an English to metric conversion. So you would look at this conversion sheet. If you're doing a metric to metric conversion, so you want to convert milliliters to liters or centiliters to liters or you know, centiliters to deciliters, something like that, you can start looking at this metric convert metric to metric conversion sheet. And when you're doing metric to metric conversions, it's super easy to convert using this number line down here. So we have these different prefixes, and you've probably hopefully learned about them in the past. We have kilo, hecto, deca. Then we have just our base of meters, liters, grams. We also have deci, centa, milla. And then um, these ones don't actually have a prefix, but then you get down to micro as well. So the way that this number line works, is it actually just asks you to move the decimal. So here's an example that I have down here, and you'll even see this on your sheet. To convert units within the metric system, so any form of meters to any other form of meters, you can do it in one step just by moving your decimal in place. So to convert units, move the decimal, the number of places, and the direction from starting prefix to desired prefix. So here's an example. If we wanted to convert 65, and I'm just going to write it um, over here. If we just want to convert 65 hectometers into centimeters, well, that's pretty easy to do. To go from hecto um, right here, over to center over here, we just move one, two, three, four spots. So guess what? Down here for our 65, we just move our decimal one, two, three, four spots, add in some zeros, and we find that we would um, 65 hectometers is equal to 650,000 centimeters. Or you could do this the other way. Let's say we wanted to convert. Um, let's say we wanted to instead convert our 
um, 65 mil millimeters. And we wanted to figure out how many regular meters that would be equal to. Well, in this case, again, going back to the fact that we have to talk about place and direction, I'm going to move my milla. So I'm going to start at milla because that's what I'm given. And I would move over one, two, three spots to get to regular meters. And you'll notice that my decimal is moving left. So I'd move my decimal one, two, three spots, fill in the zero. And I would find that 65 millimeters was equal to point zero six five meters. And that's all there is to using this number line. Another good tip for this number line is to always try and reason through what your answer would be. So on the left side here, you'll notice that we actually have larger values, so like kilo, hecto, you know, like kilometer makes you think much larger than regular meter. So we have larger values on the left, and then as we go to the right, we have smaller values. You know, things like milla, micro. So if I'm converting a problem, say even for example, this hectometers to centimeters, well hecto is a large number, cent is small. So I would think all right, is it going to take a lot of something small to equal one of something big or a lot of something big to equal one of something small? And you should think, well, yeah, it's going to take a lot of something smaller to equal something bigger. So therefore, when you get an answer of 65 hectometers being the same as 650,000 centimeters, well, yeah, centimeters are tiny compared to hectometers. So you should, so that answer actually makes sense. What I would like you to do now is pause the video and write down what these symbols mean. Now that you've had time to try these out on your own, let's take a look at the answers. So when you see CG, that is going to be a centigram. KL is going to be a kiloliter, similar like a kilometer is 1,000 meters. Kiloliter would just be 1,000 liters. MM is millimeter. Regular M is meter. And G is going to be gram. Now what I'd like you to do is using your number line, I want you to figure out how many meters are going to be in, in one decimeter. Again, notice that this is a lowercase d, so that is going to be the prefix deci, not deca. And the correct answer is going to be that 10 decimeters are equal to 1 meter. If you got that answer and you're comfortable with it, you can go on to the next slide. Otherwise, please keep listening as I go over the correct answer and how we get that answer. So using our number line, let's go through and solve for this. We had 1 meter starting, so we're going to be starting at our base right here. And then we wanted to go over to decimeters as lowercase d. And so we just need to move our decimal one place value to the right. So if I have my one meter, I move my decimal one place to the right, I would get one zero decimeters. And there you go, we did a conversion. Now what I'd like you to do is pause the video and figure out how many decigrams are in one hectogram. Alright, now that you've had time to try this, the correct answer is going to be 1,000 decigrams are in one hectogram. And let's see how we get that answer. Again, using our number line, we need to convert one hectogram and we want to figure out how many decigrams would be in this. Again, I like to actually reason these out a little bit. So a hectogram we know is bigger than a decigram because it's further left on our number line. So hecta is bigger than and deci is smaller. 
So one question I always ask myself is, is it going to take a lot of something small to make one of something big or a lot of something big to make one of something small? Well, we know that it's going to be a lot of small things going into one bigger thing. So therefore, I know that since hectograms bigger, I should get a larger number for my decigrams. So we're going to start at our hecto here, and we're going to work our way over to deca. So I'm moving one, two, three spots. So I need to move my decimal one, two, three spots, fill in my zeros, and I find that one hectogram is equal to 1,000 decigrams.